they just, they want more and more. They keep buying more properties to rent them out, to keep making more and inflating their portfolio and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you have to ask yourself, why do you want this much money? Why do you need this much money? And I'm not sitting here making an indictment that it's like people shouldn't be allowed to have that much money, which I do believe they shouldn't be allowed to have that much money. But that's not even the conversation I'm having right now. Let's we'll just put that aside for a second here. Okay, I'm talking about the fact that what is driving these people's desire to have so much money? It's more money than you could ever spend. And for me, I only really want what I can spend and maybe save a little bit. Of course, I want to save. I want to retire. I want to, we all like to retire, I know. Um, but it's just, I think the answer is some people's lusts for power just knows no bounds. Knows no bounds. Mark Zuckerberg has like, what, $80 billion? And he still spent millions to try and have TikTok banned? Right? What more do you need? You need to take away thousands and thousands of creators full-time jobs on this platform that's much more wholesome than yours. It's much more relevant content to show its, its, its users than yours. And, and you're just jealous and you have to have more. It's never enough with these people. It's never enough. It's the same logic that caused empires to be conquered, man. Their lust for power knows no bounds. They always want more, 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 just to have it, just so other people don't. That's it. Because when you think about why people want money, why do you want money? It's because you want to be able to do things. You want to be able to live. You want to be able to save. You want to be able to have fun. They have all that and far more. And it's still not enough for them. It's still not. It's about power. It's just about power. It's about conquest. It's the same predatory mental line of thinking. They get off on power. They get off on owning things, on feeling like they, can, they have power over other people. Okay? It's not about having spending money. Is that far more than enough spending money, dog? Okay, it's just me just looking around to make sure no one's watching me. So I'm in Walmart and I just want to ask one quick question. What in the fuckity fuck is this bullshit? There's my fucking... Oh. For fucking real. This is my Nesca Gold Espresso or Nescafe Gold that I love so much that I bragged about last time. $13.97. $13 and 90 fucking seven cents. The last time I bought this, it was like $7. Um, Nescafe, what the fuck? But of course I bought it, but what the fuck? I know prices are going up. That's a little bit ridiculous for instant fucking coffee. Um, okay. Anyways, thanks for listening to my rant. Love you. Bye. Back in the day, I used to be able to go to the store with $1 and get two bag of chips, mad candy, and a honey bun. I just spent $2.59 for two honey buns and a bag of chips. You know, when you're just having the worst freaking day ever, I leave 10 minutes early because I have to go to work today and I need to drop off my child at school. So I leave 10 minutes early so I can get some lunch before I drive through. The only thing close to school is Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm like, oh, I'll get a wrap. I get up there. Sorry, we're out of wraps. So I say, fine, I'll just have like a three-piece chicken strip and let's throw in a macaroni. Small macaroni, that is. $22. Make that make sense. So I'm panicking because I'm like, I'm not paying $22 for that. Are you kidding? So I'm like, uh, uh. Sorry, I had to take off my shirt. I was so hot. Okay, so then I drive over to Wendy's, which is close. There's like 30 cars in the drive through so we abort that mission. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to just run into Subway. I have 10 minutes. I'm going to do this. Yeah, it's lunchtime, so there's like six people in line. That's not going to work because I don't have the time. <sighs> so now I smell like Subway without even getting a Subway, and I still have no lunch. So just a rant. Wish me luck for the day. Let's turn this around. I don't know. I'm so upset. I, I went to Starbucks today, and I got a grande cappuccino with one pump of mocha and a butter croissant, and that was $9.20. I could get more food. I could get a full meal at Chipotle with a drink for less than that, okay? I could go to the donut shop in my local town, hometown, Mr. Maple, okay? And I get two donuts that are fresh, freshly baked maple bars and a cup of good coffee, good coffee, for less than three dollars and you're telling me that if I go to Starbucks and I just want to get a, a little bit of a fancy coffee just a cappuccino I didn't ask for anything insane and a butter croissant it's nine dollars and twenty cents are you 
out of your mind? What? I get that rent is expensive, but what is going on? This is... <sighs> Alright, Indiana, I know a lot of you still follow me, so let's have a chat. It's raining. From northern Indiana, you know what Martin's is. Martin's Supermarket, count on us for service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the closest grocery store to me. I quit shopping there a few months back because it was, it was expensive. I now make the trip out to Meijer. Why is Martin so much more expensive? Better question, the main question, the reason that I'm here. Why can I buy eggs at Meijer for like $1.34, but they're still like $4.99 everywhere else? What secret egg juju does Meijer have? Because I thought egg prices went back down because I've been shop because I've been shopping at Meijer. Am I like getting bad eggs? Like I'm confused. Not only that, but just like the price the prices there in general. I can get a whole pack of chicken breasts for like ten bucks at Meijer, but it's like six ninety nine a pound at Ma at Martin's. But like Martin's is so clean and like it's so nice, and you walk in there and you just you just feel like you just feel like money in Martin's. <laughs> Meijer, it's hit or miss depending on the day, especially because they they shut down Walmart. Anyway, it's my rant about Martins. Hi, Indiana. Hi, guys. Um, so I am in Markham again today because I will be teaching a class to some beautiful girls that are doing a destination wedding. And every time I come to Markham, I have a ritual where I love going to my favorite bun place and I get a honey lemon tea and a bun as like a snack. And right now I am very much regretting that I didn't eat breakfast because the prices of these things have gone up so much where I'm just kind of like what this used to cost me probably three dollars the drink and a bun and now this has cost me over almost like eight dollars and I'm just like wow the inflation of pricing right now is absolutely insane the buns are smaller the things inside of it are a lot smaller and Whatever happened to the days where I could get a bowl of pho for $8 or even $10, now pho is like $20 a bowl. How are we supposed to buy a house and survive in Canada when a cup of tea and literally like a piece of bread is going to cost us $8? Mind you, I live in Leslieville and the bread prices there are crazy downtown um i do like you know homemade bread and not like the breads you buy from the supermarket because there's more preservatives and stuff like that but half a loaf of bread in leslieville for sourdough is eight dollars that's my rant i just we're we're all going broke here okay so I went to the gym, right? And I know I needed to go grocery shopping. And so the perfect time to go grocery shopping is when my son is with his grandmother. Why? Because my son hates going grocery shopping. And when I tell y'all, I just spent $350 on groceries. Now, I'm one of them people who like to do big hauls because I hate going back and forth to the grocery shop. I don't know about y'all, but that's just how I do it. I have a son. I have a fucking dog, right? And so... After spending that amount of money, I don't care how much money I have in the bank. I hate the amount of money we spend on groceries. Ain't that right? Hate it, right, pup? So, thank you. I love you. Thank you for your support. So, to my friends, we got food at home. To my friends, we have liquor at home. To my son, McDonald's, what? We got nuggets at home. This shit is get out. You know what I love? Not spending money. I love going out and having a productive day and coming home and being like, yeah, I didn't spend any money today. Nothing. No Starbucks, no Chick-fil-A, no Boba, no McDonald's, nothing. I love it. And you know why? Because everything is so expensive now that every time I go out and I spend money, I literally feel like I'm being robbed. <laughs> like I'm not exaggerating. I feel like I am being robbed. Example, I went to the gas station the other day before I was headed to pick my kids up from school and I was uh, figuring I would get them some snacks. So, you know those little grandma cookies, the ones that used to get in the vending machine in elementary school for like 50 cents, 75 cents? One of those cookies was $4. $4. Okay, and then um, I have to get them each like a Gatorade, right? 
five dollars okay and I'm like okay well I'll get myself a little bag of hot Cheetos because that's my guilty pleasure and a double shot frappuccino so if I wanted to get all of us something from the gas station twenty dollars twenty dollars like all of those things should cost like ten dollars max and I just I couldn't do it I literally left the grocery store I left I was like I refuse I absolutely fucking refuse to pay that kind of money for gas station snacks everything is so expensive it's gross it's it's terrible y'all i just came back from walmart and sam's club and i'm disgusted because why are groceries this high now i have a house full of food but i needed a few things how did a few things end up being six hundred and ninety six dollars and eighty eight cents I just went to the grocery store four weeks ago, literally one month of time in the world, four weeks later that I ended up spending $6.96 when I only needed a few things. And that's not the kicker. I came across a video of this lady talking about inflation is down 30% from 2020. Girl, cut it out. Because where did it, where, where is it down at? It ain't down up here. It ain't deflate over here. It's about as high as a giraffe's butt as it's been the past three years. So where did it deflate to? What inflation are you talking about? Because ain't a thing deflated over here. Y'all, I'm going in the house because at this point, it costs too much money to be outside breathing. I am so over adulting. Y'all can have it. So I've been taking a break from TikTok recently on and off for many reasons, but the whole reason why I started doing TikTok was because I wanted to talk about the realities of not only being a military family, but mainly the realities of being a family who lives paycheck to paycheck because I don't think people realize just how bad the American citizens are struggling right now. And I understand that every country is struggling on some level right now, but 64% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. The majority of our population is one paycheck away from being homeless. And that is not only not normal in a country as rich as ours, but that is not okay. And so I wanted to talk about the realities of this to open up discussions on politically how we can fix this. And the first step of doing that is by showing myself in a very vulnerable position. It's by talking about the realities of living paycheck to paycheck. It's by talking about the realities that many military families struggle with. It's by talking about being a young parent and how expensive daycare is, how expensive necessities are, formula, diapers, and how price gouged these items are by corporations who get tax cuts every single year while the middle class is slowly disappearing because they are picking up the taxes that are not being paid by these corporations. These are the things that I talk about on my page. This is what I talk about. And in order to do that, I have to be very vulnerable because the best explanation is an explanation from somebody who's living it. And every single time I make a video talking about our financial struggles and talking about how we live paycheck to paycheck and talking about like the things that we're doing to slowly dig ourselves out of this and to give our children a better future every single time i have people commenting on my videos in the hundreds like literally i get at least 200 comments a day like this calling me a terrible mother people telling me that i never should have brought kids into poverty people asking me why i have kids if i'm broke I get comments like this constantly and at first it didn't bother me but when it happens a hundred times a day it becomes really bothersome it really becomes overwhelming instead of asking why there's not more help for military families and why there's not more help from the government for young parents and for parents in general to afford daycare costs and to afford groceries especially with inflation and price gouging they choose to blame the families that are struggling. Instead of asking why billionaires and corporations get so many tax cuts while the middle class is disappearing by picking up the taxes for them, they choose to blame the middle class people, they choose to blame the poor class people. How does that even make sense? We're not the ones doing this. The government and the billionaires are. Not being so ignorant. So I'm really broke, right? So I was like, let me get a second job. A second income, yeah, that'll fix it. Yeah. And I got the job in question, but now I have to go work at it. Work at it and work at my one that I already have too. I was, I am barely hanging on as it is. I do like the second job. Like, I, well, I don't know if I like it yet. Luckily, the job does seem like it's going to be cool. But I'm really fucking 
fucking tired. Never going back to McDonald's ever again. I just came back from ordering from McDonald's and at the end I asked them, hey, can you steam my buns? You know what they had the nerve to tell me? They had the nerve to tell me that's going to cost an extra 50 cents. 50 cents! I came in there with $15 hoping to spend at least 14 bucks. Now I've got to spend fourteen fifty to steam my buns. All you have to do is chuck my buns in the microwave for 30 seconds. Pause. McDonald's, you got to do better. You got to do better. Now I've got 50 cents to last me the whole week. I don't even know if I'm going to make it to, to Tuesday. I'm disgusted by the amount of Canadians complaining about how high inflation is. It's not that bad. Oh, it's at a 31-year high. Gas is so expensive. Then parasail the work. Push your car to learn to teleport if it's that bad and you're just going to complain about it. Oh, groceries are so expensive. Essential food. Learn to live off the land, okay? I'm living in Toronto. I'm living off the land right now. I've been doing it for a month. Just I've only been eating weeds and pigeon shit for protein, and I've never felt better so i don't know what you guys are complaining about oh, like oh i don't have any money for leisurely act then go win the lottery get up off your lazy asses canada and go win the lottery okay because inflation sure is doing this but your salary is doing th which means that if this once it all if we crash, we crash. <laughs> Economies, baby. We're fine. Stop complaining. Follow me and I'll buy a beer one day. Unless it's $48 for that beer because of inflation.